Hello, hello, it's Colin here from Grade A Computer Science and welcome to this second video in the series on computer architecture. And in the first video we were looking at the internal components of a computer and you, rem you will remember uh, CPU, memory, input and output and the three buses which form the system bus which are the control bus, the address bus and the data bus so it's useful to know those six components okay okay I wanted to uh, show you something uh, in regard to an early microprocessor in this case it's the 6502 processor and you can see there's 6502 6502 and this was a processor that was found in the BBC microcomputer and the Atari 800 computer these were all games computers and computers that could be used for um, uh, well all sorts of things really for games for research um, but they were very early computers and they used this 6502 microprocessor okay and what I want you to see are the first of all the address lines so in this case we've got a0 right round to um, a12 to A15 and this is these are address address lines or address the address bus okay so that's the address bus 16-bit address bus and then we've got the 8-bit so from D0 down to D7 that's an 8-bit data bus data bus all right now and the rest of the, the lines here are all sort of control lines and voltage lines uh, which help with the flow of data but more importantly at the moment are the address lines and the data bus lines the address the address bus and the data bus okay so what is a bus well according to computer architecture and not transport for London <laughs> it's a bus is defined as a system that transfers data between hardware components so it could be CPU it could be memory it could be input and output between the hardware components of a computer or between two separate computers it is a set of parallel wires connecting two or more components of a computer all right so those are two good definitions that you might want to memorize or, or certainly write them down okay what is a bus so the signals on the bus okay because there are electronic signals which travel on these buses now on the data and the control signal the data control signals they are bi-directional which means that they travel both in both directions so they travel between the CPU the memory and the IO controllers and just let me show you what I mean here if you look at the uh, in fact there's a better one here let me show this one here uh, if you look at the address bus you'll notice that the line from the CPU is single and it's single going into the memory and it's single going to the input on the control bus the lines from the CPU are bi-directional so they're going in two ways they also two ways into the memory and two ways into the input and output if we look at the data bus it's also two ways there you go two ways into the CPU two ways into memory and two ways into the input output and that's very important so the address bus is um, what we call omnidirectional okay the the data and control signal signals are bi-directional uh, traveling two ways between the CPU and the memory and controllers and the address signals are omnidirectional one way address signals come from the processor out to the other components of the CPU so that's very important and we'll look at that that later on as well now the address bus I'm going to focus on the address bus for a little while 
Now the address bus is used by the CPU to fetch data. That's very important to fetch data or to read data from any memory location in main memory. And the way it does that is that the CPU will send an address of the memory location on the address bus, onto the address bus. So it sends an address of the memory location that he wants to get data from and puts it onto the address bus. The data in that memory location is then sent on the data bus back to the CPU. Alright? So the CPU will send um, address data on the address bus to the memory and the memory will give up the data that's in that location to the um, onto the data bus and the CPU will then receive the will see will then receive the data bus. Okay, that's my apologies. We'll then receive the data back from the memory location. Okay. And again, looking at this, uh, this diagram, the CPU will send data onto the address bus and that will go to the memory from the address bus. Here we are. And it will go up to the memory and then the memory will say, oh, I know what that address is, and it will send back the information that's in that memory location out on the data bus. So that can then be read, or it can be dealt with by the CPU or wherever else it, ha it needs to go. Okay? Excellent. Now, memory is divided into words which can be 8, eight bits, 16, 32, or 64 bits wide. Okay, now, remember that we had the 6502 processor. It had a 16-bit address bus and an 8-bit data bus. Now, each word in memory has its own address. So any data that's in the memory will be can be addressed because that's the way that you're going to get that data out of the memory. But it's the address bus which determines the maximum possible memory capacity for the computer system. All right, so let me show you what that actually means. So remember we had um, eight and then we had 16 address lines on the on the uh, 6502. Let's imagine we've got eight eight address lines, eight an, an eight bit address bus, and so we've got all the bus, all the lines are high, so they're one 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 up, uh, for eight bits in binary. Now that binary converts to 255 in decimal. Okay, that means there is a possibility of 256 address locations, two little 256 slots where data can be stored in memory. Okay, and that's because of between zero and all the ones, there are 256. You've got 255 here plus the zero, that gives you 256 locations. So this means that there are 256 bytes of memory, assuming you have stored, you have eight bits stored in the memory locations that can be accessed. Okay, so you can access 256 bytes of memory um, when you have eight address lines. Let me try another example. Okay, here we've got um, some boxes. All right, and I want that to mem to represent memory. Now, so I'm going to put here some data. So I'll call that one, zero, one. I mean, that's any random data, really. It just it just uh, contains some data. Zero, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, where you can work out what the numbers are 
if you'd like to do that. Now, zero, zero, one, zero, zero, one. Okay, so there's our memory containing our data, eight bits of data, and we're looking at the data in that direction. So there's our first bit of data, there's our second bit of data, and there's our third bit of data. Okay, now in order to get access to that data and read that data, we've got to address it. We've got to find out what location it's in. So in this case, let's call it location one. So we're going to call that one zero 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 zero. Okay, and in this case, we've got an eight bit address bus eight bit an eight bit address bus. So those eight bits can can uh, find our um, our data, and then the next one we've got in the next location. It'll be location two, zero, 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 zero. Okay. And then the last one will be location three. That'd be one, one, zero. Okay. So by using these, uh, the, using these, uh, address locations, one, two, and three, we'll be able to find what's in those locations. Okay, so this is our address. This is our address, and this, in fact, is our data. Well, pardon me, my type, my writing's really terrible here. Okay, this is our data. Okay, so we can find the data in the memory location by using the address. Okay, so here's another example, 20 address lines. Now 20 address lines means that you can access uh, 1048576 memory address locations. This means 1048576 bytes of memory, assuming of course you've got 8 bits stored in the memory. Which means that you've got 1048.576 kilobytes of memory or one megabyte that can be accessed by 20 lines. Okay, so that means that if you've got a 20 line address bus, you can access, you can access one megabyte of data, one megabyte of data, which is contained within the memory uh, of your computer. And just to give you a bit more of a flavor for what um, various microprocessors, could, microprocessors can do, you've got here um, some early microprocessors. They've got address buses here of um, 20 lines. Um, and that gives us a data maximum adjustable memory of uh, one megabyte. You've got here the 2086, the 8026, 8286 and 386 with 24 uh, address lines that gives us 16 megabytes and going up to the Pentium Pros 2, 3 and 4 they have 36 address lines a data bus that's sorry an address bus which is 36 uh, bits wide that gives us 64 gigabytes of data which can be accessed by that address bus. In our next video we'll be looking at the control bus and the data bus. Look out for the next video.